Okay, so assalamualaikum. So this yeah, in this video lecture we'll be discussing all about capital budgeting. So this is now time for self check question number two. Okay, so capital budgeting is a process of deciding whether or not to commit resources to projects whose costs and benefits are spread over several time periods. So this is long-term uh, decision-making. So what are the characteristics? So first, it, is, it requires substantial amount of funds. Second, um, the element of uncertainty becomes more critical because the length of time is longer. Third, the effect of managerial decision will be very difficult to reverse because of the time frame and the substantial amount. And fourth, plans must be made well into an uncertain future. So because of uncertainty, the, the plan should be intact. And five, success or failure of the company may depend upon a single or relatively few investment decisions. So there are two general types of capital investment projects. So we have first, independent capital investment projects. So results in an accept or reject decision. Okay, so um, independently, um, the acceptance of another doesn't mean rejection or acceptance of another project. Okay, so sample, investment in long-term assets. Okay, investment in equipment or ICT or new technology. Number two, new product development. Number three, undertaking a large-scale advertising campaign, new advertisement. And for corporate acquisitions, we have the second type, the mutually exclusive investment project. So choosing an alternative would automatically reject or exclude the acceptance of other offers. So number one, replacement against renovation of equipment or facilities. So replace or retain. Uh, number two, rent or lease against ownership of facilities. Three, manual versus computerized systems of bookkeeping. Four, preventive maintenance against periodic overhaul of machinery. And five, purchase or lease of machinery. Okay, so time for self-check question number three. So there are three important elements of capital budgeting. So first, the net amount of investment, the cost of investment. Second is the operating cash flows or returns from the investment. So these are the cash inflows. Next, we have the minimum or lowest acceptable rate of return or the cost of capital. So for capital budgeting, we are using the WAC or the weighted average cost of capital. And we have here the two methods of evaluating capital investment alternatives. So first, we have the non-discounted cash flow techniques. So these techniques did not consider time value of money. And the second group, the discounted cash flow techniques uh, or those tools or techniques that considers time value of money. A self-check question. So this is self-check question number one. So we have here the net cost of investment. So we have from the acquisition cost, we add the additional working capital involved. So we get the total. Then less, we deduct the cash inflow arising from um, the sale of old asset being replaced or another net of taxes and the avoidable cost net of taxes. So that is our net cost of investment. Okay, so let, we have a problem here. Aisha Company is considering to replace its old equipment with a new one. The old equipment had a net book value of 100000 for remaining useful life with 25000 depreciation each year. The old equipment can be sold at 80000 So the new equipment costs 160000 have a four-year life. 
cash savings on operating expenses before 40% taxes amounted to 50,000 per year. What is the amount of investment in the new equipment? So here the question is, how much is the cost of our investment? So we have here the initial amount of investment, 160,000, and this is the purchase price of the new equipment, less the cash inflow or um, decrease in outlaw at uh, period zero at the beginning. So we have the market value of old equipment, 80,000. Then we have the tax benefits on loss on sale of equipment, that's um, 20,000 times 40%. So we have 8,000. So um, we have cash decrease in outflow. Decrease in outflow because there's a proceeds or cash inflow of 88,000. So we have net investment of 72. So we have here our um, cash inflows or returns from the investment. So we have here the following sources of cash inflows. So number one, there's an increased revenue over the life of the project. That's one source of cash inflow. What is the incremental revenue? Second, the reduced operating expenses over the life of the project. So by doing the capital project, how much has been reduced by our operating expenses. So that's additional cash inflow because we are not um, paying cash. Number three, we have the proceeds from sale of old assets and this will be net of taxes. So um, those are cash inflows. Of course, we will receive money. Number four, released working capital at the project's end. So... Um, at the end of the project, let's say the project is for seven years, if there's a working capital release, that is one um, source of cash inflow. And the salvage value re realized from asset disposal at the end of the project. So these are the sources of our cash inflows. So we have here the types of our cash outflows. Okay, so we have acquisition cost, we have additional working capital like inventories and receivables, we have incremental cash operating costs, so incurred over the life of the project, and we have the additional taxes owed on incremental taxable income. Okay, so for our um, cash flows, our operating cash flows may come in the form of cash inflows or cash savings. So, for cash inflows, we have, of course, incremental revenue, okay? So, what is our incremental revenue? Then, we have our incremental cash operating cost. So, we have our cash inflow before taxes. So, we deduct incremental depreciation and deducting also the income taxes, Okay, so we will get the net income after taxes. So we add back our incremental depreciation because we are not paying for depreciation. So we have the net cash inflow after taxes. So for our cash savings, so our cash savings are um, cash operating costs for if the old asset is used less annual cash operating cost if the new asset or method is used. So we have the cash savings before taxes. We less any incremental depreciation and increase in income. So we have here um, uh, possible increases, potential increases in income before taxes. So we deduct the income taxes. So we have the increase in income after taxes. So we add back the depreciation. So we have here the net cash savings after taxes. Okay, so for another concern, the third concern for capital budgeting is the interest rate used for evaluating projects. So we have first letter A, the cost of capital. So cost of capital, we use here the WAC. Okay, so only projects that can earn at least what the firm pays for funds should be accepted. So uh, the minimum um, return 
of any project that would be acceptable should be at least equal to or greater than our walk. Another is the minimum acceptable rate of return. So there is a really a specific rate that is considered by the management um, as a threshold at, as to which project to be accepted. We also have desired rate of return, target rate of return, or required rate of return. So um, this rate reflects management's rate of return expectation. So you, we can also use this if there's um, no uh, available data. Another is the hurdle rate, a level that a project's ROR must jump over or exceed. Okay, and we also have the cut off rate. Okay, so the rate at which projects with a higher ROR are accepted and those with a lower ROR are rejected. So um, this is often the rate where all available capital investment funds are committed. So any of the rates here can be used as discount rate in evaluating capital investment decisions. So we are using discount rates for um, discounted techniques, those uh, models that use um, or consider time value of money. Okay, class, so that would be all for today. So our next lesson coming up would be Capital Budgeting Conceptual Overview.